Hey, what's good? It's your boy, Matthew Michael. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your indicators on Robinhood. All right, so here we are in Robinhood, taking a look at Apple. And what you're going to want to do to set up your indicators is click on this circle with the two arrows in it to the right. And right here, you kind of have your charts. All right, so I already have some indicators showing. So I'm actually going to take those off. And in order to set up your indicators, you're going to hit these top three lines in the top left. And I'm gonna delete those real quick. Just so y'all can uh, be along for the ride on how to set them up. And real fast before I set these up, I just wanna take a moment real quick to say that I am not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. And this is just how I personally like to set up my charts. So if you think you wanna try something else out, there are a bunch of videos on YouTube. Feel free to check them out. But this is just how I set mine up. So when you're setting up your indicators, you're gonna click add indicator and I am going to add, I'm, I'm gonna start off by adding a moving average. And right here where it says period, this is gonna be for the length of time. Some pretty standard ones people look at are like a 200 day, a 50 day, 30 day, 20 day. I'm going to add a 200. So I have my 200 day moving average. And if we back out, you can, you can see that there is now a blue line for the 200 day moving average. And if I wanted to toggle that on and off, I can just press this at the top, it's gone, now it's back, like magic. All right, so now I am going to go back, add my other indicators. So now I'm going to add an EMA. I'm gonna make it a 30. I, and, and the EMA, and the, moving average these they're both moving averages when it comes to the difference i'm gonna be real i don't know the difference between a moving average and an exponential moving average but this is how i've always kind of done it and clearly when i'm looking at the charts i find both levels to be helpful so this is just how i do it all right the next indicator is going to be the rsi and i never mess with these numbers uh the period 14 days that's two weeks overbought level is 70 that's a pretty standard level for overbought on the rsi and oversold is 30. again these are typical overbought and oversold levels so i'm going to hit done and then going back to look at those you'll now notice there is an orange line which is the ema and then down at the bottom there is another orange line which is the rsi and whenever it gets above that kind of highlighted zone it's considered to be over bought and whenever it gets below it's considered to be oversold next we are going to add one more indicator and that's going to be the vwap and really all the vwap is it's just the average trading price based on the number of shares traded for that day or for that time period so um yeah we have the, the vwap is the purple line and that kind of moves based on the volume being traded and the average trading price of the stock. All right, so now we have all our indicators set up and you'll notice if we back out, you will not see it on this screen. Uh, Robinhood makes you click over whenever you want a picture of all this, but it's nice to know it's there. And you may be wondering, how is all this gonna be useful to me? The use for all these indicators is it's gonna paint a picture for you. It's gonna give you a better sense of direction make things clearer and show you the overall trend. All right, so right now you'll notice they will change as you look at different time periods. So this is Apple over the past day, Apple over the past week, Apple over the past month. And I want you to notice that the lines and the crossing of the lines look a little different. All right, so, um, yeah, let's, let's look over the week. So you'll notice that the stock candles actually end up going above and below some of the lines. So, so when it comes to the 200 day moving average, the way I look at the lines is if it's above, it is bullish. If it is below, it is bearish. And each line has a different time period. The, the VWAP will always be based on the, the price and trading volume. The moving average is just based on the average Kind of like price and the ema is kind of right there with the average average price as well typically your last line uh, whenever you see it crossing the 200 day 
that's when I would say, hey, it's super bullish. But typically when I'm doing day trades, I'm using the EMA to kind of like, okay, it's time to take profits. It's about to cross over to the other side. And then the RSI is typically used in conjunction. I wouldn't use any of these on their own, but uh, you'll notice kind of in this area right here, the RSI dipped below the kind of highlighted zone below 30, which is about right here. The RSI dipped below and that typically means it is oversold. And one thing you'll notice is these indicators kind of like to be balanced. So it prefers to be trading in this highlighted zone than, than really strong on one end. So you'll notice if you look down here, you'll see it's oversold. And when it was oversold, it had a little bounce up before it came back down. So when you see something being overbought or oversold, sometimes that can be a good indicator that there's about to be a reversal. There's plenty more to learn about using these indicators. I want to take this time to thank you so much for watching and peace.